Shalom, all praises to the Messiah, to the King, the greatest, the Almighty. Man, I pray the Lord, the Most High gives me uh, strength to make it through this video because I am a little tired. But I just couldn't, I couldn't wait for tomorrow to uh, make this video. The last prophet. I, I'm not talking about uh, anyone that calls himself the, the last prophet. No, I'm not gonna mention his name. But I'm, I'm I'm approaching this from the source, the book, sealed portion, and the man that translated it by Christopher Mark Nemelka. Last video. I was led to look look him up to see what he looked like. And I share what he looks like on the last video that I made. But then today, I was led to actually watch a whole video and a video, a half, a half a video of him. At least a, pro, pro, probably a half of the next, the second video. To hear what he had to say out of his own mouth. And if you're interested, you can go to YouTube and put in episode 341, Christopher Namelka, or in uh, episode 342, Christopher Namelka, for part one and two. Christopher Mark, last name N E M E L K A, Namelka. To see what he, what his stance is. Well, he talked about he was kind of visited like Joseph Smith was. And he didn't really talk about being visited by Maroney or anything. He 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 visited, he said he was basically visited by in so many words, Christ. And he also said he was visited by his granddad who accompanied the Christ, the, the, the person that came as a, as he called it, a high intellectual uh, person from another galaxy or another uh, realm. Then as I was listening to what he believes, his belief system is not even compatible with what's in the seal portion. He says that there's really no such thing as a God. He said, basically, the Almighty is inside of you. The scripture does say, for the kingdom of God is inside of you. But he said that there is no no other person except you. So that's not even what the seal portion says. Seal portion says the father has a body of flesh and bone, just like Christ has. So that's even contradictory to even what the seal portion says. One thing he did acknowledge was that he called them the Natives are the Indians and the African Americans, who which basically the Mormon Church and the Church world has basically taken their identities. So then it made me think, because even knowledge being saying that he's the last prophet to the man who was supposedly Christian who was uh, debating with him. So that lets me know that 
there's many other references that reference that the seal portion, I mean, the, the, uh, at least the Book of Mormon and on the seal golden plates, I just read about the Most High said, write some things on golden plates, even in the first day. Shalom. So, now that he said, he tells the man that he's the last prophet. And the concept of the seal of the uh, last prophet is basically in the books of Mormon, the seal portions of the Book of Mormon. And he acknowledges had been part of the Mormon church. And like I told you before, when it comes to things I know not about, I'm not going to say what is and what isn't if I don't know about it specifically. I'll take the stance of my elder, uh, Jacob, who's told his sons when Joseph was telling them his dream. They were angry with him, wanted to kill him and do all these things. And you know what ended up happening. But I'll take the wisdom of my elder, Jacob, who said, I will observe these things to see if they be so. But what I can do is I can examine and research the word and precept the words to see what I can, can I can match scriptures and doctrine. I can't do that. So that's what I'm doing. So this man said he's the Last prophet. So then I went back. I found more scriptures than this, but this is one. I can just use this one right now. Amos 2 and 11. And the most I said, and I raised up your sons for prophets and your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, says the law? You know, it says the Lord, but I say the law. That's who he is. He even tells you that in certain scriptures. And even in the sealed portion, Christ even told him, said, I'm the law. Because he's the word. So, and so now we know that the most High said, I change not. So we know all of the prophets are Israelites. This man, Christopher Mark Nemelka, don't fit the criteria. And then he has a kind of a new age perspective from his own mouth. So that makes me think like some things like I said, I got to evaluate. So when I evaluated the scriptures, the Most High says that men land with men, men and women with women and all that is abomination. And he gave them over to a reprobate mind. But when it comes to the sealed portion, it's kind of like he said the Most High kind of winks at it. This is just my evaluation from reading it. You, you might have a different interpretation. But it seems like he's saying the most high uh, winks at it and it's their free agency if they want to do that. But they just won't be in his part of his kingdom. And then we had another brother. You know, because it doesn't make it as plain as everything else does. 
most of the provinces in the sealed portion are plain. It calls specific names, places, and different things like that. But when it comes to Christopher, according, I'm just, I'm not against nobody. I'm just evaluating now. We have another brother who says Christopher means. Uh, what is the term you use? Uh, what is? I'll get to it when I read it again, but I can't think of it right now. Uh, the it's, it's something to do with. He's basically an advers, uh He he's a he's a representative of Christ. And the way Christopher puts it. There's only one. Joseph Smith was the first one. And Christopher Mark Nemelka, according to him, was, is the second last prophet, the last prophet. So we see that's not the truth because the most high don't change. And Christopher Mark Nemelka is not of the Israelite nation. And then one thing the first stick says if his chosen people who are Israelites repent, allow him to clean their lives up and they become spiritual Israelites, meaning that they're no longer, even though they are still natural Israelites who the promises belong to in the flesh, but if they are converted to be both flesh, the natural representatives of the flesh to become spiritual Israelites, meaning mean being converted from Jacob to Israel. Then they will be a people that's above every other people, according to the scriptures. But the modern day books are, they're not modern day, they're scripts, they're uh, Torah, they're from the same eras as the other books, but the problem is we have a lot of Gentiles who have uh, put their images in our books, and they've also included themselves in positions that they were never included. I'm not saying that they couldn't be can't be saved. And like I'm just saying, even if we look at the look at the um, Third Testament. It tells us that the 144,000, I, I can read a part to you that now we'll read it to you. It says that all Israel shall be saved. He, I mean, he said many are called, meaning all of the Israelites, and I'm going to read it to you. But only 144,000 shall be chosen. Christ said he, the reason he came was to fulfill the promises of the father to the to our ancestors, our fathers, meaning Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now that we know about it, Maroni and the ones here in Americas that came from that era, it just thought that they came to America. And then since we know he's based on scripture, he has to be a fraud, Christopher. So that means a lot of things, even in the sealed portion that people consider bone, came from him. Because he even says himself, some things did come from him. His mind is the way he thinks. So that means he didn't write the whole thing. He did, he did translate it to fit his purpose, some of the things. Because it still stand true to the Israelites or the still the same or the, or the chosen people. He did bring light to in uh, page 79 that the racism and all of those things and the forefathers of these uh, Europeans that came to America being racist and all these type of things. He it, it's right on, on it's right on on a lot of things. It's just that he's very uh, imposing of inclusion when it comes to himself. So, 
So then, like I said, this is, this is no hate message. This is just getting down to the nitty gritty of it. I went to the the Book of Remembrance of Enoch and the same book of Haggai when this plainly points out that these books are an extension of the sealed portion. Read it to you time and time again. So we can't throw them away because they're part of the sealed portion. And they bring out pertinent information about our ancestors that previously could not be proven. So I'm going to read I'm going to start off, it said, dividing the authority of Elder. Bedell 11, 17 through 20. And it came to pass that Yasha said, the authority of the world and sensual, that's, that's basically uh, the, the dark world, the dark hell, so to speak. The, the dark side only rise up to show their ugly faces for brief periods, but in the authority of elder, that's that's basically uh, where the most high dwells. That's uh, 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 that's 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 the realm of uh, uh, where, where we're trying to get to, back to. that remains with a man in the midst of eternity so that he can act in behalf of the welfare of Yod, the real church, his church, and Maween according to the desires of Anoki said, that's the father. And when a holy man has a continuous and ongoing awareness of the desires of Anoki said that supersedes a present moment, So no matter what's going on in this particular time, your desire is to do the will of the Father. Then it has come to be called priesthood authority. But my Father calls them his men of service. Noted at the bottom, Strong 7218, God's designation of the Marari, men of service. Or, that is to say, his band of excellent ones. Noted at the bottom, it is interesting to note here that God views priesthood as a collective, not an individual. And because of the sustained and effective authority of the men of service, the wicked greatly fear them and liken them to a poisonous serpent who will strike out against them. And Yasha said, any virtuous and holy man, any virtuous and holy man can have the authority of elder, but holy and virtuous women by their nature can only have it for use in present moments. So that, that right there also shows you that the 144,000 high priests are all men. I showed you that in another video the other day. But the women, you can't forsake them because the women have great authority too. They have the authority of Shem. The men have the authority of Shem. Then also it, tell, it tells us about, we think about Shem and Shem having, uh, being uh, close personal relationships. It tells us in the book of remembrance of Aki, first and second book of Aki, that Michael the Archangel has a per close personal relationship with uh Kyle. The, the, and, she, and then there's another section here says Kyle is also known as uh, the living water. So, from that aspect, it says she is the spirit that will reside um, in the last days. So that Holy Spirit with the Holy Ghost. So if you have the same thought here, the 144,000 are the men after the order of Shem, or, the, or you could say 
the priesthood of Melchizedek or the priesthood of the son of God. And the women have the priesthood of Matilia. Uh, uh, I might, I miss her name so much. Matilia the Bob or whatever it's called like that. But more, you know, it's, you, you can say it easily to say Shum. If you've read these books, you know what I'm talking about. But to make it clear, I won't know that, but since I read it. And Yasha said, any virtuous and holy man can have the authority of elder, but only a virtuous woman by their nature can only have it for use in present moments. And for them, it cannot be continuous and ongoing because they minister to the present needs. And men can have this authority in a continuing way because it is given to them to know and establish the definitions and purposes of all the souls in creation. All right. So we found out that the Most High, although he does deal with individuals, but before the collective good. All right. Oh, yeah, let me go here. Oh, yes, what's called bearers, bearers of Christ. So, in, in a one brother said that the, and please don't take this as me being against anybody. I'm just trying to use scripture to bring understanding. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not attacking nobody. So if we go to chapter 39, verse 18 of the Third Testament, it says, when that people is prepared, truly I tell you, they will take up and carry to completion they will take up and carry to completion the great mission with which from the beginning of time, God has assigned his chosen people. So we know his chosen people, all right? Just read it. Israel, that's his chosen people. Chosen because they were his firstborn. Let's see what people was his firstborn. Going back to scripture. Not what people think or say, but scripture. That's why you got a precept. Chapter 3, verse 22. Exodus 4 and 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, this says the law, Israel is my, is my son, even my firstborn. You just have to heard the words say it, not my words. So if you don't agree with it, you don't agree with God. Because I didn't say that. He said it. How do, how do I know he said it? Because I just precepted it. And when that people is prepared, truly I tell you, they will take up and carry to completion the great mission with which from the beginning of time, God has assigned his chosen people. Let's see who his chosen people are.
Isaiah 44 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Israel is the people. Although it's still Jacob, but Jacob, the man, is Jacob. But his conversion to Israel means it, it, it also extends to his children, the children of Israel. Those converted spiritual people who come from his natural seed. When that people is prepared, truly I tell you, that's why they got to be prepared. When that people is prepared, truly I tell you, they will take up and carry to completion the great mission with which from the beginning of time, God has assigned his chosen people, chosen because they were his firstborn and the bearers of Christ's revelations. It says, it says the Lord's, but that's the same thing. And the bearers of Christ's revelation so that I, that so that like an older brother, they could lead the others. Read that again. I'm gonna try to do it more clearly this time. When that people is prepared, truly I tell you, they will take up and carry to completion the great mission with which from the beginning of time, God has assigned his chosen people, chosen because they were his firstborn and the bearers of Christ's revelations so that like an older brother, they, they, like an older brother, they, not him, like an other brother, they could lead the others, share his grace with them, and carry all to the right hand of the Father. That's why I also say Christ was the firstborn among many brethren. The firstborn. And when I speak of my people Israel, the people of God, I refer to those who have brought a spiritual mission to earth. Those who, who made known my law. Those who proclaimed me. Those who were faithful, those who proclaimed the existence of the living God. See, Joseph Smith don't exist, don't claim that uh not Joseph Smith, but uh Christopher out of his own mouth said he don't proclaim in the living God. He said that in so many words, we are God. So he'd been disqualified in so many ways. By his own words. Looking over some things, see if there's something else I want to share. All right, now you're talking about the mark of the Most High. It says the mark means a calling, missions, responsibility before God. It is not a guarantee against temptations or illnesses. If it were, what merit would there be in my chosen? What effort would it be? For your spirit to remain faithful to my words. Now, just to precept that in the sealed portion, it tells us, unless it is a sickness unto death that the Most High determines, He wants you blessed. But it depends on your faith whether you will receive that blessing. You have to have faith enough to override the sickness. That's why Christ often told the people he healed, your faith has made you old. Verse 44, page 226 of the Third Testament. I speak to you in this way because there are many hearts among this multitude 
that would wish to form part of those who have been marked out, marked. But I've I have seen that rather than the yearning to serve humanity with the gifts that the mark bestows. That's why I said you should do greater things than these. They people just want to be able to do the miraculous things, not out of the real love for the people or desire to be obedient. They just want to boast on what they can do. It is desire to feel secure in vanity that moves them to ask me to call them. The most I call these petty ones. I will test these petty ones. And they will be convinced that there is truth in my words. The mark is an invisible sign by which those who bear it with love, respect, zeal, and humility can complete their mission. But it, is, it also tells us down here on the, on the page on 40, uh, 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 section 42 or verse 42. It says, how much the chosen of this time shall have have to pray and keep vigil to not fall into temptation. Even so, I tell you truly that among the 144,000, there shall be traitors. You can see that right now, what's going on. Because people want the preeminence. Verse 45, the mark is an invisible sign by which those who bear it with love, respect, zeal, and superior zeal, and I, I went down too far, respect, zeal, and humility can complete their mission. You will then see the mark is a divine grace that is superior to pain, that illuminates you in your greatest trials that reveals profound knowledge and which in any place can open a breach for the passage of the spirit. The mark is like a link uniting whoever possessed it to the spiritual world. So when you have the mark of the fathers in your forehead, you are connected to the spiritual world. It is the channel, it's like you, you on a spiritual channel now. It is the channel by which the thoughts and the words of the spiritual world manifest in yours. Know then, by my words, that the marked one is a messenger, an envoy, and my instrument. The commitment and responsibility of the marked one Towards my work is great. See, he's giving you an explanation towards as speaking to one man, but yet he's talking about many. That's why he can tell the prophet Ezekiel to all the other prophets, I knew you before you were born, even though he's talking to that one prophet at that time. But that applies to all of them. The commitment, that's like if you get a job. It, the explanation that the job gives you, if you're reading over the paperwork, it could say all of you are hired, but it don't really say that. It just say like it's talking to you, but it's basically talking to everyone that's, that's hired when they read it. The commitment and responsibility of the marked one towards my work is great. But he is not alone on his path. By his side, there walks a guardian angel who protects, guides, inspires, and strengthens him. That applies to all of the 144,000. Verse 51, the tribes of Israel of the spirit are very numerous. From each, I will select 12,000 and shall mark them on their foreheads. But the people of Israel are not limited to 144,000. 
the chosen people are infinite. That's why if you read Revelations uh, 7, he said first he marked, like he said here, 12,000 from each tribe. And once he got finished mentioning all the tribes except Dan, he said, then I saw a number without number. Saying the same thing. The master taught you, this is verse 52, the master taught you in the second era that many are called, but few are chosen. And all of Israel shall be called. But from among them, I shall mark out 144,000. Verse 55, one part of the 144,000 marked out by me living among humanity those servants of mine are found disseminated in the world, complying with the mission of praying for peace, working for the brotherhood of man. They do not know each other, but some intuitively and others, because of this revelation, are fulfilling their destiny of throwing light unto the path of their brothers. Verse 56, of those marked by my love, some are simple men, but others are men of nobility, a noble in the world. They can only be distinguished by the spirituality of their lives and works and by the manner of, of their thinking about and understanding the divine revelation. They are not idolaters, fanatics, nor frivolous. They seem to practice no religion. And nonetheless, from them arises an inner worship of their spirit with that of their Yasha. So that told us a lot right there. All right, let's see where else we're going. Sealed portion, chapter 18. Fifty six to eighty five. Verse fifty six. But these things shall condemn you and shall confound your false doctrines and traditions that you've allowed to creep into the foundations of the church that is called after the name of Jesus. For in the beginning, the foundation of your church was given in its purity. And Yahshua suffered it to be organized according to the power of the holy priesthood and under the direction of the Holy Ghost. But you shall reject the pure foundation that was given unto you by him who shall receive this record from the place wherein I shall hide it. And because of your wickedness, the world will reject you and shall murder him who has given these things unto you. But another like unto him shall Yasha rise up, raise up to bring the sealed part of this record forth among you. And he shall have power given unto him even the power of the Holy Spirit to confound you and preach repentance unto you and show you the wickedness of your ways. Hmm. Now, according to what's been said, and I told you before, I even talked to the man who said he's the last prophet in Israel. And I was sharing with him that as far as the Book of Mormon, the uh, those of the Mormon church tried to give it to me at least two or three times in 2017. And that man said the same happened to him. They tried to give it to him too. But at the time, 
I wasn't trying to hear it. I threw in the trash too, about two or three times. They gave me a big nice one too. I should have kept that one. Boy, they had a whole bunch of information in it. Then the most high opened my eyes. And then the sealed portion, I believe I can truly honestly say I was the first one uh, that tried to receive this sealed portion. But they did not deliver it to me. I'm not trying to say I'm the last prophet. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say that he was trying to give it to me back then. And then we have another problem. We have a little issues going on in Israel right now. That this brother now is teaching about, and I ain't going to put words in his mouth, but he's doing, re I'll put it this way, he's doing research into magic now. Based on information of tying that together with our ancient people. And we know that our ancient people did a lot of wicked things. So just because our ancient people did it, don't mean it was right. But even the man who said he's the last prophet says that Big Judah was the first one to bring out the information about the Book of Mormon and different things. So that means if you're going by the last prophet or the first according to this, the, the, next, the man who brought it to the nation, like that was Big Judah. But now he's in the magic, allegedly, if you listen to other people. So wouldn't he be the last prophet? He's the one that brought it out. Because it says, but ye shall reject the pure foundation that was given unto you by him who shall receive this record from the place wherein I shall hide it. Yeah, I don't believe in sorcery either. I rebuke that. I believe in the spirit and the power of the almighty God. I'm just trying to say the, uh, I'm just using what was said. And if big Judah was the first one to bring out this information, that means he would be the last prophet. I'm just saying for consideration. But he's going now to start to research into other things. That is contrary to what the and I I'll put it this way. He's going further into researching the histories and foundations of what uh, allegedly our forefathers were into, what belongs to us. Well, but I, I do say contrary to that, and like all like my state, my stance is. Just because our ancestors did it don't mean it was right. That's why we're in the position we were in today because trying to duplicate what our ancestors did. That's the whole purpose for repentance and baptism to be cleansed from the curses that were brought on themselves through the witchcraft and sorcery of our ancestors. But our righteous ancestors weren't doing that. That's why, that's why the father said that righteous line that promised seed, although all have sinned, but, but for the most part, that promised seed stayed true and repented. David was at the other people's wives, but he always repented. Or he was at the, at least one man's wife that he had killed. For her love. So what I'm, what I really said that was they want to try to cause no problems. I'm just saying, if you go by what people say, you can't just throw stuff away. That you know when people say stuff, and it don't turn out the way you know it. it, it uh, that maybe might want it to go, you still got to go by what was said. 
Big Judah was the first one to bring out the Book of Mormon. And the reason I say I was gonna, I would have been the first one to bring out the sealed portion, because I used to listen to people all the time, and they were talking about the Book of Mormon, and I ran across the sealed portion. I was gonna order it. Ain't nobody talking about the sealed portion. But they didn't send it to me. They used to always do that with the books I was trying to bring. I got books right now that they ain't sent to me that I've paid for. And once again, I'm not trying to put myself in the category, well, see, that makes me the last prophet. No. That's why I'm reading and researching through the scriptures. And the Most High says he sees it as his priesthood as a collective. Because when you consider this, when you make yourself the only one, now that, that automatically creates a battle. Because now you always got to defend it. Somebody say something different, now you got you to gotta defend it all the time. That's why I said, I know I'm one of them. 144,000 to the most highest appointed me. So that there, when I keep that stance, now all I got to do is worship the most high and do my best to point you in the right direction to get to him. I ain't got to fight for a position because I already know I got one. I just got to keep on doing what's right and repenting. Ain't no pressure on me. Because the reason I say that, all you got to do is use the wisdom of Jacob just to observe those things and see if they become so. Because just like Christopher Mark Namelko has been found out through truth, when the truth show up, the lie is exposed. So I ain't got to sit around fighting people to see who is who is who and what is what. I don't. But I'm not going to say they not, because if I do that out of arrogance and pride, that means I could be fighting God. That's why the elders back in the day said, let's observe those things, see if they be so, because it could be we're fighting God. But if, if, if it be from man, it shall come to naught. But it'll be from God, you're going to be fighting God, and you don't want that fight. That's just wisdom. Let me start back to 56 again, looking at the time. But these things shall condemn you and shall confound your false doctrines and the traditions that you have allowed to creep into the foundations of the church that is called after the name of Jesus. For in the beginning, the foundation of your church was given in its purity, and Yahshua suffered it to be organized according to the power of the Holy Priesthood and under the directions of the Holy Ghost, direction of the Holy Ghost. But you shall reject the pure foundation that was given unto you by him who shall receive this record, from the place wherein I shall hide it. And because of your wickedness, the world will reject you and shall murder him who has given these things unto you. Now we found out that Joseph Smith was in true to, a, truly an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. So he's not a white man, so to speak, or a Caucasian. That's another thing that through Joseph Smith, I mean, uh, Christopher's illusion out the window.
But you shall reject the pure foundation that was given unto you by him who shall receive this record from the place wherein I shall hide it. So this is telling us right here that this record was hid somewhere. The guy Christopher was trying to make it like came like it came out of the blue to him, and he found these rocks and. But more so, it was like uh, uh, his imagination or his his thoughts brought forth these things. If you hear him talk, that's why I gave you the video reference to go watch it for yourself. Because I'm not trying to make nothing up. I'm trying to bring out the truth for you to evaluate for yourself. And because of your wickedness, the world will reject you and shall murder him who has given these things unto you. But another like unto him shall Yasha raise up to bring the sealed part of this record forth among you. And he shall have power given unto him, even the power of the Holy Spirit who can found you and preach repentance unto you and show you the wickedness of your ways. And you shall become like unto the Jews at Jerusalem who were the murderers of the prophets of old. And you shall call upon your secret combinations, which combinations you think are of God. See, a lot of people think this magic and all this stuff is of God. This secret Societies and all these things, they use magic and sorcery, which they're priests. A lot of ones we think are our preachers and different ones, they're preachers of the secret combinations. They're, they're sorcerers. And what you think are righteous, even like unto the end, like unto them of old. Yea, you should call upon these to murder this prophet. That you shall become like the Nephites at the time Samuel the, Lem the Lemonite was called by Yasha to preach repentance unto them. For when Samuel went forth to speak the truth concerning the wickedness of the church of God that was among them, they wanted to kill him and cast him away from them so that they might not hear his preaching. And then he made he made a couple Christopher made a couple on the video made a couple of comments about the Lamanites and the Nephites basically saying that was a uh, like a story. But even this book here tells us that they were actually Israelites. And even with his own mouth, he acknowledged that the that he called African Americans and Native Indians, Native Americans, whatever you whatever he said, that these people who were religions and the Christians were uh, slave masters. He said that with his own mouth. For when Samuel went forth to speak the truth concerning the wickedness of the church of God that was among them, But one thing I will say, the fact that Christopher brought out this information, even though he meant it for evil, the Most High meant it for our good, to give it back to us. Because word exposes Christopher to be a liar. And his word supports the collective of us being the 144,000 high priests and prophets.
For when Samuel went forth to speak the truth concerning the wickedness of the church of God that was among them, they wanted to kill him and cast him away from them so that they might not hear his preaching. But the Yasha protected him, even that their bows and their arrows could not hit him. And he who shall bring forth the sealed part of this record shall flee unto the rest of the world for protection, even unto those who are not of your church. And they shall protect him and give him sanctuary until he has done all that which he has been commanded him by Yasha. For it was the world that was responsible for the death of him that brought forth the portion of this record that was unsealed. And it was the cause of the wickedness of the church of God that caused his death. Now the same church shall seek the death of the prophet of God who shall bring these things forth unto you. And it shall be the world that open up his mouth and consuming it the flood of water that is issued forth from the mouth of the serpent that has control of, of this church of which I have spoken. Then shall the words of John be fulfilled, which he wrote saying, and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. See, even in that, that one child that, are born, that was born unto us is Christ, or a child should be born unto us. But the many brethren of the firstborn is talking about the 144,000. It's not just talking about one child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time and time and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. The remnant of her seed, that is the house of Ephraim. Because we're going we'll be we're the ones that was assigned to bring this truth out. But if you also but if you go about 144,000, there's 12,000 from each tribe, though. And the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. How do you know that's 144,000? Let's go to Revelation 14. Revelation 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him, that's the child, that lamb. But he's the firstborn among many brethren. The rest of his brethren are the 144,000. And, and I looked, that's the government of the Most High. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, 
having his father's name written in their foreheads. And out of the voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts. And the elders, no one can learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women. He's not talking about natural women. Talking about that beast, that whore, and her offspring. False doctrine, doctrines of men. For these were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whatsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, the fullness of the gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, saying, With a loud voice, fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven, and the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of the waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine and the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in their foreheads or in his hands, the same shall drink of the wine and the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast of his image and his image. Whosoever receiveth the mark in it of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. We know the saints are the Israelites. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And the dragon verses uh, seal portion 18 and 67. And the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We just read that in Revelation 14, the 144,000, the prophets, the saints. For behold, the prophets of God have been persecuted by the wicked ever since they were first called to bring the law of the gospel unto the children of men. And a true prophet of God is always persecuted and hated by the world. And this is the thing that I ask of you that belong to this great church of the latter days. Are your leaders hated by the world? Do those who have set themselves up as your prophets receive the afflictions of the prophets of old? I say unto you, they do not. And why do they not receive this persecution as a true prophet of God should? because they are of the world and they seek the praise of the world more than they seek to, to teach unto you the law of the gospel. And in the day that you shall read my words, even in the day when Yasha shall give unto the world the words of the brother Jared, you shall see your leaders rise up and condemn this work. And they should condemn this work because it testified against them and bring it to your attention, the truth regarding their wickedness and abominations. And they shall say unto you, behold, these things are not of Yasha. For Yasha would not give unto you anything except it, except he do so through the authority of the church. which is held in the authority of those who have been called of God to serve in his holy priesthood. Mm. 
It said a lot right there, too. And they shall say unto you, Behold, these things are not of Yasha. For Yasha would not give unto you anything except he do so through the authority of the church. Remember, we read, read in the book of Remembers, the authority is a collective. Which is held in authority of those who have been called of God to serve in his holy priesthood. His priesthood is a collective. And they shall speak unto you in kindness and smoothness. He said, we shall speak unto you in kindness and smoothness and in the gentle natures that you have become accustomed to hearing their words. But in this same way, did Benelli entice and convince Cain that he should reject the words of Abel and rise up and murder him. And they shall teach unto you their precepts that justify the wickedness of your, of your ways. And they shall justify unto you the need for your churches and your temples and the fine things of the world. And they shall do that which had been done by all the leaders of religions that are not set up according to the principles and laws of the gospel of Christ. And now I, Maroni, have shown unto you the wickedness of some of those who profess to be the followers of Christ, but deny the power of Christ. Christopher denies Christ. He said there's no such thing. which power can only come by keeping the commandments of his gospel. But the whole world lies under sin and shall come under severe condemnation, except that the children of men shall repent and turn their hearts towards the gospel that was given unto their fathers. And if they do not do this, then the whole earth will be destroyed at his coming. And this is what was meant by the prophet Malachi, of whom Yasha spake when he visited my fathers in the land of Bontifer. And he said unto them, remember, ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Herod for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming and dreadful day of Yasha. I should have, maybe if I, have time and I can remember I'll read a little bit about Elisha because he talks about from my remembrance of reading that in the third testament he talks about that spirit of Elisha uh, residing in many of the Israelites not just one and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the father to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And now I, Moroni, ask of you, what was the law of Moses with its statutes and judgments which the law had given unto Moses in the land of Horeb? Horeb. Yea, even that, that law that was given unto him upon the mount, I say unto you, it was the law of the gospel, or the words of Christ, who is the giver of this law. When Moses descended down from him the mount and witnessed the great wickedness of the children of Israel, he threw down the law and gave unto them a lower law, which was a law of sacrifice and ordinances and rituals that pointed them towards the higher law, or in other words, the law of the gospel. The law of the gospel is the higher law. That's the order of Melchizedek, order of Shem, order of the Son of God, the Christ. And when Jesus came into the world, he testified unto the people that he had come to fulfill the law which Moses had given unto the children of Israel. And he gave unto them the exact same law, or the exact same gospel that he had given unto Moses before the rebellion of the children of Israel. And this same law that he gave unto the children of Israel, he did give unto the Jews at Jerusalem. 
And the same law was given unto my fathers. And this law was also given unto others who are not of the house of Israel, who dwell upon the earth and other parts of the other parts that were unknown at the time of my fathers. That's how uh, Christopher got a hold of. But what did he do with it? He changed stuff. He said he was the Messiah in so many words. Yet he had received, because in, in according to his own words, he said he knew more about the Bible, he knew about the Book of Mormon, he knew about all these books more than anybody else in the world. That's what he said. Out of his own mouth. Yet he had received the commandment of the Father to give these peoples, these peoples the law of the gospel also. And this he did according to their language and their culture and according to their understanding. And in the last days, the world shall have this gospel preached unto all peoples throughout the world. And it shall be carried into all the ends of the world until all have heard it according to their own language and their own understanding. Those of you who belong to this great church, which is called after the name of Jesus Christ, who believe that it is by your words that the world shall receive these things, I say unto you, that it is because of your pride that you believe these things. Read that again. Who believe that it is by your words that the world shall receive these things. I say unto you, that is because of your pride that you believe these things. For when this gospel shall come unto you by the way of the record of my father, behold, in that day, the same gospel shall already be among many of the peoples of this earth. And because, and because it was given unto them according to their, their own traditions and customs and understanding, you should not recognize it. Well, I always talk about the Moors, don't I? I can tell they've heard it before. Because I, I hear one of their elders always talking about how, but they 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 uh, only include the Moors. They say that many of us are, when talking about them, they say many of us are back here just to help those who need help. I heard one of them say that. That's that's something that's in the sealed portion. Uh, no, some kind of thing. Something else they say. When it speaks about overcoming in the sealed portion, or was that the? Uh, Doctrine and Covenants, one of the two. I'm just remember where I read it from. Talks about overcoming means self mastery. That's something. That's another term they use. So, quite sure they heard it. Like I said, I'm not here to cover nothing up. I'm, I just share information. Because the word of the Most High is going to be true regardless. If it's come from him. Verse 83, seal portion, ch uh, chapter 18, verse 83. And those of you who belong to this great church, which is called after the name of Jesus Christ, who believe that it is by your words that the world shall receive these things, I say unto you. That is because of your pride that you believe these things. For when this gospel shall come unto you by the way of the record of my father, behold, in that day, this same gospel shall already be among many of the peoples of this earth. 
And because it was given unto them according to their own traditions and customs and understanding, and I will say one thing too, just based on, this is just my observation. This is not scripture. This is my observation. Just like the Moors don't recognize, it's from my point of view, from what I've heard, what they say, they don't recognize like a, just like uh, Christopher don't recognize a real heavenly father. And what I've gathered from that, those the people who have these doctrines that don't, don't recognize a real heavenly father, even though they recognize other beings, it could be that they don't want to recognize a heavenly father to answer to. They want to rely on their own philosophies and uh, religious practices and theories. But they'll give a acknowledgement, full acknowledgement to being there being other beings though. And because it was given unto them according to their own traditions and customs and understanding, you should not recognize it. But if it teaches the law of the gospel, it is recognized by God. And now I would that all the world should have the words of this gospel and live by the commandments which are given therein. Which commandments not seen? That's why I recognize it. So no matter what you say about it, this, these books are have a consistent reference to keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Father. And it's told us right there: if you do that, the Most High recognizes. He might not recognize the stuff you put in it from your own thinking, but he recognizes the consistency of keeping his law, statutes, and commandments and keeping the fullness of the gospel, which is the law of the gospel. Verse 85, and this gospel was taught to the children of Adam in the beginning in such a way that they could mis they, they could not misunderstand that which he spoke. See, that's why I brought up the idea about who is Christopher. Because most of this gospel, most of this sealed portion is so plain, you know exactly what it's saying. Until you get to the topic of the last prophet being Christopher. Christopher, the, the man who wrote it, tells you it's him. And we see that it's not. Based on scripture. So. Anybody else that steps in that position to saying that that's what Christopher means, and he's the one that translated it. He's telling you he's Christopher. And then if you're saying that's the bearer of Christ, and like I said, I'm not against nobody. I'm just going by what was said based on what we're reading. The third testament tells us that all of us are bearers of Christ, 144,000. That's not, I'm not trying to stir up no problems. I'm not trying to fight nobody. I'm just reading and precepting and coming to conclusions based on scripture. Verse 85. And this gospel was taught to the children of Adam who are indigenous, by the way, we found that information out through the uh, Book of Remembrance, the ancient Book of Grandmothers, chapter 1, verse 99 on down. They were aboriginal. Verse 85, and this gospel was taught to the children of Adam in the beginning in such a way that they could not misunderstand that which he spoke. Therefore, I return once again unto the words of Adam, according as they are given by the brother of Jared upon the record that he caused to be written. 
for they are plain and simple and easy to the understanding of the children of men. And in this way, as Yasha commanded me to present these things. So you should be, shouldn't be no questions about what he's talking about. You know, you know, the mysteries are have been uncovered. He's making it plain. So you ain't got to do no additional subtraction and addition to find out who is Christopher. When this man, Christopher, who gave you his whole name, even on the video I referenced that you can go watch, tells you himself he, it's, it's, he put himself in the book. Let me go to uh, the sealed portion, verse 95. See, the reason I know this book is true and that he put himself in the book is because he leaves a lot of stuff that's like like it's supposed to be left, like the children of Israel and God. And he talks about how the God, the Father, has a body of flesh and bone. And, but he said there is no God. He's contradicting the book if he wrote it. A lot of his beliefs and philosophies don't match up with the book. And if he does take credit for writing anything, he takes credit for the bone that's in it, stuff he put in it, that would more likely match his belief system. Seal portion, chapter 95, 14 through 55. And now I ask you of the latter day, yea, what good is the knowledge that is taught to you in your schools of learning? Does the knowledge that you learn point you towards loving your neighbor and doing good unto them? Or does it not teach you to exalt yourself above your neighbor? Yea. Does it not teach you that which you must do in order to get more gain than that which the poor and meek receive because they do not attend these schools? And what of the poor? Are not they the ones that work in your, in your fields and sow your clothes and do all manner of manual labor that provided you with a house in which to live? And what have these? Who are the most important people in sustaining your daily lives? Yea. What have they learned in your institutions? Behold. Behold, not attending your institutions causes them to be humble before God and work by the sweat of their own brow, which was commanded of them by Yasha. See, because you don't have them walking around, so you got to call me this or you got to call me that. See, today men become so puffed up that the even the so-called African-American Negro can get a doctorate degree, a doctrine, doctorate degree, and then all of a sudden now you can't call them uh, John Smith no more. You got to call me doctor because I've earned the right to be called doctor. You, 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 got, you must call me doctor if you're going to approach me. All right, I just, want, I just want to approach you then. <laughs> I call you no doctor. I feel more comfortable mentioning Dr. J, because at least I get some excitement out of it. 
on his old films. But then the system will turn right around and show you how much they think about your doctrine. You just you just a regular old nigga when they get tired of you. Thirteen. Yeah, these are the poor and the meek and the humble whom you have based because you have lifted yourselves above them and paid them a low wage for which you would not work. Many of the poor shall desire to attend these schools that they might also participate in the economy of the beast and take its image upon them. But because they are poor, they shall not have the means whereby they can pay for the education that the rich have placed a value upon to get gain. Behold, these institutions shall be set up to enrich those who invest in them and pay the salaries of the professors and administrators who are emissaries of Satan and share in the glory and blessings that he has promised them. Behold, these have been convinced by Satan that without an education that can only be received in an institutional learning that is set up to get gained, the image of the beast cannot be realized. In other words, the American dream, the United States dream, the corporation, the corporate dream. Neither show the great standard of excellence that they have been deceived into thinking should be the desire of every heart and come to pass. Yet these are the learned of whom the prophets have testified, shall persecute the poor and the needy because of their words. And in other words, because of their lack of, of the education offered in these institutions. And now Yasha offered it his truth and his understanding of knowledge to all without price. Hmm, that's the thought. Let me see if I find the scripture. Isaiah 52 and 3. For thus says, Josh, the, says the law, you have sold yourselves for naught, and you shall be redeemed without money. Verse 23, seal portion 95, 23. And now Yahshua offered his truth and his understanding of knowledge unto all without price. Yea, this is what was meant by Jacob when he said, come, my brethren, everyone who thirsted, come ye to the waters. He that has no money, come buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Therefore, do not spend money for that which is not worth, of no worth, nor your labor for that which cannot satisfy. And now, how can you, your degrees and your honors and your glories of men, which you shall receive in these institutions, satisfy your desires of happiness? Yea, the only desire that they shall satisfy is your lust for power and gain according to the plan of Lucifer and the blessings that he has promised you by following his plan. Man, you, 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 you hear all this wisdom? This unselfish wisdom? That's how you know this, this is not written by man.
I'm not saying, or no, I'm not, because I'm, I'm still trying to make peace. I'm not trying to have war, but I'm trying to tell the truth. All this unselfish wisdom, you can, you can just enjoy it because you know it's coming from a pure place. But when you get to talking about, I'm the last prophet, I'm the one who can do all this, I'm the one, and that's not against my brothers. That's not, I'm, I'm just trying to say, see the difference? Yeah, even after you have obtained all the glories of men, are you then happy and satisfied with your lives? See, if you was watching uh, the Raiders play yesterday, right? Derek Carr, you know, I don't know the man, but I like him. But he appears to be this great Christian, right? But even he had a testimony after the game. He said, Man, even because I ain't been in the playoffs all my whole career. Now that I finally got here, it, it, it have not brought me joy. It hasn't brought me happiness. He said that. He said it might not hit me tomorrow or something, but right now it's, I, you know, see, because he said the things of the world just leave you empty. Verse 25, yea, even after you have obtained all the glories of men, are you then happy and satisfied with your lives? I say unto you that you are not satisfied with your lives. For behold, I have seen your day and have read much concerning your great wickedness in the words that have been written by the brother of Jared, and we know that you are not happy. But even after you have received all these things, you still seek for those things which Satan has provided for you to ease the pain and misery of your souls. Now, this is not a message of perversion, but I'm a, I told you the problem I used to have, which was masturbation. So, of course, you list you, you've used to listen to or look at Luke Skywalker, you know Luther Campbell's music and album covers. He always had naked, big booty women on. And he told a story of how he had he used to have so much sex to he couldn't have sex no more. So he 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 used to decide to get off on watching other people. Can't never get enough. That's the story of all of the lust of the flesh, lust of, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Can't never get enough. And then you're frust frustrated that you can't not fulfill your lust. Seal portion 95 26. For behold, I've seen your day and have read much concerning your great wickedness in the words that have been written by the brother of Jared. And we know that you are not happy. But even after you have received all these things, you still seek for those things which Satan has provided for you to ease the pain and misery of your soul. And your children, behold, they do not use the freedom that they have away from the auspices of their parents to drink wine and use those things which ease the pain and misery of the pressure and burden that these institutions of learning place upon them. Behold, what happiness do you find in these things? And now, what use are many of the courses of learning that you are required to take in order that, that you might obtain a degree and an honor that you might perform your duties in a profession, profession that will never utilize any of the knowledge that you receive from those 
from these required courses. Behold, this is the desire of the rich who have set up these institutions to get gain and power over you. For behold, the more knowledge that is required of you, the more you are forced to pay to those who shall reward you with the glories and honors of men. Behold, why do you allow another, indo another to indoctrinate you and control your thinking when that in which they have indoctrinated you shall do nothing to give unto you the peace and happiness that you desire? Behold, why do you trust in the professors and the teachers and the educators of these accepting learning? Of these, uh, let me read that again. Verse 31. Behold, why do you trust in the professors and the teachers and the educators of these accepted learning institutions among you, yet deny the power of the Holy Ghost? See, you, you, you still trusting in these teachers and educators who wrote these books about the ancestors participating in magic. That's denying the power of the Holy Ghost. We just read the other day that people who so are fascinated with magic who don't, and then they, they even some associate that with, with the Most High. But the Most High don't operate in magic. He operated in the true power of the Holy Ghost. They can sit a whole earth with billions of people on it. I don't know. I'm not that educated on how many people on the earth because I don't really think about it. But they say billions of people on the earth and allow it to sit on nothing. Who else can do that? They can just sit the earth on nothing but his word. Just tell it, stay right there. Who else can do that? Which can teach you all the things that you need to find happiness and be saved in the kingdom of God. Do you not know that the prophets of old knew and understood many of these things, which are much greater than the things that you are taught in the schools of men? The prophets was way more educated. How's that? Most High often showed them. <laughs> might have might have scared the, the 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 whatever the whatever out of them, scared the devil out of them, but he showed it to them. Let me use an example. Oh, Father, can you show me what what is like? Or uh, tell me? Well, no, I'll just show you. Gabriel, take the man and let him stand on the edge of the earth. I, I, I didn't want it. Take, take. <laughs> that's that, that's how they knew. He showed them. And when Yasha Jesus Christ was upon the earth. Did he attend these institutions of learning? Yea. Did he desire any of the honors and glories of men? Now, this is what I pointed out yesterday. So we shouldn't boast on things when we don't know the whole stories. So I was talking about a brother that's in Israel. He said he's the last prophet. And he often boasts, and I love my brother, man. I'm, 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 just, just, I'm just showing you. He says, he often boasts of you know, his lack of education and not having that much education that shows who he's the last prophet. But if you read this part, this part of this verse, that, that, Lack of education belongs to Joseph Smith, not Christopher. Not to the one who said he's the last prophet. Verse 34, seal portion, chapter 95, verse 34. And Joseph and Christopher 
who are the last prophets who shall be among you upon the earth before the coming of Yasha, what do you think they learned in these institutions? Behold, the former shall not have more than the education that is required of a young child, that's speaking of Joseph Smith, yet he shall bring forth truths unto you that the world has never known. Verse 36. And the latter, Christopher, and the latter shall attend this inst shall attend this institution of secular learning during the time of his refinement, having been influenced by Satan to follow the course of his plan. But he shall overcome the temptations of Satan and shall mock the ways of this institution and shall prove therein that the wisdom of man is nothing compared to the wisdom of God. So this Christopher did go to the higher learning. To the most high showed him the truth and then he started mocking the institutions of our day. 37. And it shall come to pass that when the Yasha cometh upon the earth to reign up during the millennium, he shall cause to be destroyed all of the institutions of learning and all the books contained therein that teaches unto the children of men the lies that Satan desired them to know concerning his plan. Behold, he shall teach all the inhabitants of the earth the gospel, which he taught before, which taught a man that he should love his neighbor and his enemies as much as he loveth himself. Yea, and upon his, this foundation shall the inhabitants of the earth learn all of the truths which are necessary for their salvation and eternal happiness in the kingdom of the Father. And he shall teach them the truths concerning the order and laws of nature, which shall be presented and taught in such a manner that even a young child shall understand and be able to use the knowledge that shall be given unto him by Yasha for the sake of his own happiness. And now, I have already explained unto you that only those who are celestial in their desire shall be given the knowledge and power over the elements. Only those who are celestial in their desire shall be given the knowledge and power over the elements that will allow them to create worlds and the environs that are required by these worlds in order to allow life to begin thereon. Therefore, if only those who are celestial shall have this knowledge, and this knowledge shall be taught unto them by Yasha in its pure form, of what use shall it be for others to study the function and laws of nature when they shall be forbidden from using this knowledge in any kingdom that is not celestial, which the kingdom of the glory they have chosen for themselves because of their free agency. In other words, the Most High say, and only if you're not trying to keep his uh, keep his law, statutes and commands, we say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things to be added unto you. If you're not doing that, you wasting your time by going to school. Because you ain't, you ain't, you're not going to become celestial and it's going to be a waste of time because you're not going to be able to use it anyway. Read it again, verse 42. Therefore, if only those who are celestial shall have this knowledge, and this knowledge shall be taught unto them by Yasha in its pure form, of what use shall it be for, for you? It says others, but what, you, what, what's, what use should it be for you? to study the functions of the laws of nature when you shall be forbidden from using this knowledge in any kingdom that is not celestial. This made it personal. Which kingdom of glory you have chosen for yourself because of your free agency. Behold, during the last days, Satan shall have the ability and power 
to give unto the children of men many of the powers of God and give them a limited understanding of these powers. As I've already explained it unto you. And ye of the latter days shall see the great destruction that shall come upon the inhabitants of the earth because of this knowledge and these powers that Satan shall be allowed by the Father to give unto, the, unto, the, unto them. Therefore, you shall see how wicked and selfish men use the, these powers for their own gain. And the knowledge that they shall receive from Satan shall be taken from them during the last millennium of the earth and shall only be given to those who are righteous and who would use these powers for the benefit and happiness of all the children of God. And thus, we can see the great wisdom of God in allowing Satan to have access to these powers to incorporate into his plan in the latter days. For it shall be proven that the desire of Lucifer in the beginning to give unto all of the children of God the powers that the Father possesses can only lead to chaos and misery because of the selfish way in which these powers are used by those who are not celestial beings. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, seek not for the knowledge of the world, for it shall not lead you down the path of righteousness, which path shall bring you the happiness that you desire. But before you seek for knowledge, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be given unto you. And when you understand the Father and know him, then are you at one with him. And the purpose of the great atonement that has been fulfilled in saving your souls from misery that you would have experienced by following the plan of Lucifer. Behold, do not seek for an education that you might become rich and receive the honors and glories of men. For in this thing, you shall become prideful and shall offend the spirit of God. Behold, here are more of the words of Jacob, which have been given in the unsealed portion of his record and which bring great joy to my soul. For behold, the Nephites were like unto you of the latter days, and that they had acquired many of the fine things of the world. But the Yasha caused that Jacob should speak unto the people regarding these things. Therefore, I would that you of the latter days liken this word, his words unto you. For they were written and preserved and sealed up to come forth un unto you for your instruction. And it is written, saying, I must tell you the truth according to the plainness of the word of God. For behold, as I inquired of Yasha, thus came the word unto me, saying, Jacob, get thou up into the temple on the morrow, and declare the word which I shall give unto, the, unto this people. And now behold, my brethren, this is the word which I declared unto you, that many of you have begun to search for gold and for silver and all for all manner of precious ores in the which this land, which is a land of promise unto you and to your seed. He, he was only talking to Jacob and his seed thus abound mostly plentifully. And the hand of providence has smiled upon you most pleasingly that you have obtained many riches. And because some of you have attained more abundantly than that of your brethren, you are lifted up in pride of your hearts and wear stiff necks and high heads because of the costliness of your apparel and persecute your brethren because you suppose that you are better than them. And now, my brethren, do you suppose that God justifies you in this thing? Behold, I say unto you, nay, but he condemneth you. And if you persist in these things, his judgments must speedily come unto you. Verse 48. And when you understand the Father and know him, okay, I went there already. All right. 
So we're going now. Let's go to the front of the book. This is Ether 4, 13 through 19. Come unto me, O ye Gentiles, and I will show you, show unto you the greater things, the knowledge which is hid up because of unbelief. See, these many of these Gentiles here, he's talking about Israelites that had, had unbelief. That's why you can go to... Uh, Romans chapter 11 and chapter 9, I believe it is, but I believe it's chapter 11. That was, that was called them to be broken off from the tree because of unbelief. Talking about that was talking about us here in the Americas in different places. Come unto me, O you Gentiles, and I will show unto you the greater thing, the knowledge which is hid up because of unbelief. Come unto me. And it shall be made manifest unto you how great things the Father has laid up for you for the, from the foundation of the world. And it has not come unto you because of unbelief. Behold, when you shall rend the veil of unbelief, which does cause you to remain in your awful state of wickedness and harden, hardness of heart and blindness of mind, then shall the great and marvelous things which have been hid from up from the foundation of the world from you, yea, when you shall call upon the Father in my name with a heart, broken heart and a contrite, heart, contrite spirit, then shall you know the Father has remembered the covenant which he had made unto you. And then shall my revelations, which I have caused to be written by my servant John, be unfolded in the eyes of all the people. Remember, when you see these things, you shall know that the time is at hand, that they shall be made manifest in very deed. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not uh, here to say what isn't or what is. I'm just presenting information to you. And you have the right to believe what you want. That's your free agency. As long as I'm not lying to you. Remember, when you see these things, you should know that the time is at hand. That says they shall be made manifest in very deed. Therefore, when they, when you shall receive his, this record, you may know that the works of the Father has commenced upon all the faces of the land. And letting you know this is the seventh seal has been broken. Therefore, repent all you ends of the earth and come unto me and believe in my gospel and be baptized in my name. For he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned and signs shall follow them that believe in my name. And blessed is he that is found faithful unto my name at the last day. For he shall be lifted up to dwell in the kingdom prepared for him from the foundation of the world. And behold, it is I that has spoken it, and it is so. After 4, 13 and 19. Let's see where we're going now with it. Sealed portion, 35. In 65. Okay, let's see.
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start sixty down to sixty five. But I say unto you that this record is plain and pure and has not been translated by the hands of men various times, and so much that it has become corrupted by the hand of man. But this record shall be translated once, and its translation shall be true. It shall be given unto him who shall translate these plates upon which I write these things through the gift and power of God, which he shall have with him. And these words shall be more precise and easy to understand to the understanding of men, even so much that none shall have an excuse to disobey the words of Christ because of the mistranslations interpretation of men. For this record shall be the final testimony of Jesus Christ. It shall include all the things which God shall reveal unto the children of men in the latter days to prepare their hearts and minds for the coming of his son in his glory. Therefore, this record shall be the greatest source of scripture that has ever been given to the world. And if it's so, if, if it, it and if it so be that the children of men only had this one scripture then that would be all they would need in order to prepare themselves to be saved in the kingdom of the Father. And there should be no other scriptures given except it be by the mouth of this last prophet by which these things shall come forth. But this last prophet shall say nothing contrary to that which is given in his record. And he shall restrain himself from giving any more of the mysteries of God except for those mysteries that are given with this record. For this record shall include all the things that the father would want his children to know. Even all things which have been among the children of men, which ever shall even be even unto the end of the earth, even until his son cometh again in the flesh. That's contrary of what Christopher said. He don't believe in no son of man coming in the flesh. and teaches them from his own mouth. So in other words, Christopher is Antichrist. But the things that he shall teach them with his own mouth shall be those things which are written herein. Therefore, I admonish you to read these things and feast upon them. Yea, you should read these things in the morning and in the midday and in the evening, even that you should ponder them in your bed at night and live your life according to the words of Christ that are written therein, herein, that you may be worthy of the spirit which shall teach you all of the mysteries of God until you know them in full. All right, so where are we going now? I see, here we go. We're going to go to the Seal Book of Moses, known as the Seal Book of Mormon. Chapter 15. All right. Verse 3. And the God of my father said unto me, Joseph, a chosen seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins. And he shall be highly esteemed. And I will command him to do the work for the fruit of thy loins. For whosoever shall accept his words and be baptized because of them, shall be numbered as part of the house of Ephraim. That's how we know, that's how we know we're from the house of Ephraim. Verse 
Therefore, a descendant of Joseph, the brother of Manasseh, to whom shall be taken first to this place far beyond the great waters. So Ephraim was the first ones here in America. And they should be a remnant. We heard about the remnant. Branch of the house of Jacob. And he will bring you to know the covenants which I made with your father. And he shall perform whatever work I command him. And lo, I, Yasha, will make him great. And he shall be in my sight like Moses. And his name shall be known among all nations. For he shall do my work. Yea, truly, he will be like Moses. Which I said that I would raise up to deliver my people. O house of Israel, from the oppression like the slaves. For behold, I will raise up a seer to deliver my people out of the land of Egypt. And he shall be called by the name of Moses. And by that name, his brethren shall know that he belongeth unto the house of Israel. Therefore, the fruit of thy loins shall write a record as soon as his offsprings obtain this land beyond the sea. And the fruit of the loins of Judah shall also write a record. Come with the Bible and the Book of Mormon. And that which is written by the fruit of thy loins in this far country and that which is written by the fruit of the loins of Judah shall grow together. Each in his own nation for the purpose of confounding false doctrines and appeasing contentions and establishing peace between the fruit of thy loins and the house of Jacob in the last days. When then the words of these two records are brought to the notice of their fathers and to the knowledge of my covenants, which I made with the house of Israel, says Joshua. And again, a seer, I will lift up of the fruit of thy loins and I will give him power to carry my words to the seed of thy loins who were brought into this land beyond the sea and which are a remnant of the house of Manasseh and Ephraim, that is to his brethren, not only to bring to his brethren the words of his father, but to the convincing of them of my word, which shall already have been declared unto them by the hand of the first seer of the last day. And to this seer, I will bless. And those who seek to destroy him will be confounded. Because this promise I gave unto you because of the first seer in the fullness of time. Of whom I promised that I will remember the fruit of his loins from generation after generation. Even after that arrow of death, a ray that I saw in the hand of the enemy shot down the esteemed seer. And the name of his son shall be as his own. And it shall be Joseph, according to the name of his father. And he shall be like unto you, Joseph of Egypt. And what Yasha make by him shall lead my people in the latter days. And Yasha swear to Joseph that he would keep his seed forever, saying, is I will raise up Moses in Egypt, that he may be a token of that which I will bring in the last days, a token of it. Having in his hand a rod to gather my people, the fullness of the gospel. Having a rod, which is the fullness of the gospel, to gather my people Israel in the midst of a promised land, America. Having discernment according to the spirit to write my words, but not many. For I will write my law by the finger of my own hand on stone tablets, and I will prepare him a spokesman whose name shall be Aaron. Behold, in the same way, I, Yasha, will raise up a Moses in the last days, and I will give him power over a rod, the fullness of the gospel. 
and the ability to write a record. But I will not let him speak much, for I will not untie your tongue. But I will write unto him my law by the fingers of my hand, which are the records of the ancient prophets of this place. That in this land, overseers, I'm sorry, in this land, overseas, my people will live by the teachings of a metal book. Keep on going. Therefore, I will not make him powerful in words among those whom he will carry this message. But I will write my law in your heart by the finger of my own hand. And I will prepare him a spokesman as Aaron shall be to Moses. But this one will come from thy loins, my servant Joseph. Behold, therefore I, the Yasha, will raise up a Moses for the preservation of the fruit of thy loins, and I will prepare for him a spokesman from thy loins. And behold, I, the Yasha, will make this one a Moses, write the account that was left by the fruit of thy loins to the sons of men, and also to the knowledge of the fruit of thy loins, and the spokesman of thy loins shall declare to this people in the last days. Behold, therefore, the words that this a Moses shall write shall be the words which I, in my wisdom, deem fit to come unto the fruit of thy loin in the fullness of time. And it shall be as if the fruit of thy loins cried out to them from the dust. That these words might, may rise again in the latter days. For I know their faith. And all thy seed shall cry out from the dust. Yea, they shall cry repentance unto their brethren. That shall dwell upon the face of the earth, even after many generations have passed with the opening of these words unto the children of men. And because of their faith, behold, the words of this one Moses shall come forth out of my mouth unto their brethren, which are the fruits of thy loins, and of the weakness of this word, of his words. For behold, he shall not be able to speak, but I will strengthen him by his faith. So that the covenants which I have made with thy fathers can be remembered concerning the gifts of my spirit in the last days. Say for your young men shall dream dreams. Your young, let me try to remember what what it says. And because of this covenant, you are blessed. For thy seed shall not be destroyed. For they shall hearken unto the words of the book that is, that, that, that is this. A Moses shall deliver unto his spokesman, in whose cry of repentance of this of his brethren shall be heard by many, even according to the simplicity of the of his words, same after many generations, until I Yasha raise up one thy brethren in the last days, yea, one mighty among them, who shall do much good, both in word and in deed, being an instrument in my hands with exceeding faith to work mighty wonders and do the things which is great in the sight of God and to bring to pass much restoration unto the house of Israel and into the seed of thy brethren. So there you have it. You, it's up for you to decide what the word is, what you've heard. One thing was certain, most high's word be true. And every man be a liar. I should observe these things and see. Thus says the Most High, his word is spoken. And my input is I should observe to see if these things be true. 
because I know the Most High's word is true. Until next time, Shalom.